We'll start with Greg Hunter. Hey, Sean. So obviously a lot of people have talked about the change in the offense in the last month and a half since the, you know, since Oscar left. Explain what that means for you and just exactly how it's different now. For me personally, uh, having Derek in there, um, obviously not having Oscar in the paint as well, it gives Derek a lot more freedom, a lot more room to, to maneuver and do some things in there, which is good for us because when we throw it in there, especially now, probably more than ever, they're starting to double Derek from the weak side or from the baselines or wherever it may be, um, and giving Derek more room to, to work in there allowing you know double teams to happen and then him finding open shooters on the outside is really working for us i think and then on top of that playing four round one that gives the guards um again not having two bigs in there gives you know a little more room to penetrate and drive and drive and kick and do some do some things like that michael sussman uh sean you scored 24 in the last matchup against kansas what do you remember from that game that you could maybe use as you try to attack them this time around? Uh, just the way I shot it, confidence, um, the, or the approach that I kind of went in to not only that game, but I think the game's more recently here too. Um, just not thinking, yeah, I scored 24 in that game, but um, I mean, it's obviously nice, but it's in the past. It's, you know, got to play present um, and hopefully go out there and, and do something like that again. Is Justin Jackson. Hey, Sean, kind of the flip side of that, uh, Kansas as a team, obviously the first con first game hit a lot of threes against you guys. What can they take from that game and, and into this game? And, um, you know, obviously they haven't shot the ball like that since. So, you know, that, that 16 number, was that just an anomaly? Or, you know, what do you guys take, you know, a lot of those threes came in the second half. We gave up a lot of offensive rebounds, um, long rebounds that, that they ended up getting and spraying out to their shooters. And when they made that big run, obviously they hit quite a few of them. Um, so they're watching film, of course. I'm sure they're saying, you know, they don't box out well, um, certain things like that. What we're working on, of course, is, you know, boxing out, getting loose, re uh, loose balls, rebounds like that um, to kind of eliminate some of those second chance points. Okay, back to Greg. Sean, a lot of people have talked about you guys' defensive struggles, and not just you, but as a team. Uh, how much better can you get? I mean, are you sort of are what you are right now? Um, there's a lot of room for improvement. Um, yeah, it's February. It's This is kind of when things should be thriving and moving in the right direction. Um, but in practice, we're, we're working on it every day, trying to make some tweaks and adjustments um, on the defensive end. I, wouldn't say, I mean, yeah, we're giving up a lot of points. Um, I think – we're making the right rotations. We're maybe just a step or two behind or step slow. Um, all of us included, uh, me, me, myself included in that too. Um, but we're working on it. We're trying to adjust and, and make the right, make the right decisions. Next is Kevin Kinder. Sean, expand on the defensive rebounding a little bit and those long rebounds. You know, when you're boxing out, are you just, is it just become a man to man thing? Or if you're in something like point drop where you're rotating a little bit, is it more area responsibility? What do you have to do when those balls do come off the rim and come off deep? Yeah, uh, depends on, you know, what kind of defense we're in, whether it be man to man, point drop, um, things like that. Regardless of what it is, they have five, we have five, everybody's got to find a man and box out. Um, I mean, obviously, man to man, you're, you have obviously guarding one specific guy, um, but whether we're playing zone or point drop or whatever it may be, um, there's five out there, just like we have five. Everybody's got to find one. So, Back to Justin, go ahead. Sean, you're obviously in the middle of your college career, but growing up, I'm assuming you were a fan of the game as well. Um, <laughs> the, this year, obviously, this, for so many reasons, it is different from, from many others, but I think it's kind of interesting. If you guys beat Kansas tomorrow, they're probably going to fall out of the top 25. Uh, Duke's not in there. Kentucky's not in there. You know, Michigan State, North Carolina. What does that say about the, the game uh, today? And is it, you know, is it interesting at all? Very. Uh, I had a, a family member of mine text me um, about a week ago and said, did you ever expect that Kentucky, you know, would be struggling the way that they are and, you know, not in the top 25, things like that. And, me growing up being a Kentucky fan and, you know, being from Kentucky, I mean, they were always, you know, top five, top 10, you know, yeah. 
I mean, Montoris did really well, uh, really good team. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's a different time. It's a, I mean, especially with, I think obviously what's going on is affecting everybody, um, but it is what everybody's trying to adjust and figure out how to, how to make things work and how to win ball games. But yeah, it's definitely, definitely different. If we could get this win and, and knock them out of the top 25, that'd, that'd be great for, for us. Greg. So Sean, sort of following up on that, obviously you got a, a year of college under your belt. So the COVID times you could sort of, I'm thinking just roll through it, but teams that rely on younger players and didn't get the summer to really work with them like they normally do because of the pandemic, could that be a reason that those blue bloods who are one and done teams often are, are struggling? Yeah, I would say so. Um, the time that you get in the summer is huge for, for skill development. I mean, you only get a certain amount of hours on the floor with coaches and, and things like that. So the actual, you know, play, I mean, trying to set plays and, and do things like that, it's good to get that head start. But I think that summer is more so about, you know, player development, skill development um, and things like that. And that time that was taken away from, you know, players that you were referring to, um, I think it, it eventually affects the overall team. So. Okay, Sean, thanks for joining us. Yep, thank you.